Hey there, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We are here in London with the cast and filmmakers of Men in Black International. We have the amazing director, F. Gary Gray, stars of the film Tessa Thompson, Chris Hemsworth, and Kumail Nanjiani. And we've got our producers, Laurie McDonald and Walter Parks. So let's get this chat started, shall we? All right, first question is going off to Gary. So you have done both action and comedy. What was it like infusing these two styles into a sci-fi film? Action and comedy. Well, I had a lot of fun shooting my first movie Friday. And um, I had a lot of fun shooting my last movie, Fate of the Furious, which has a lot of action. Um, I've never done a sci-fi film, so in or to, it was just great to infuse all three genres. It was a lot of fun. It was great to work with, with Lori, with, with um, Tessa, with Chris, with Kamal, and with um, Walter. It was just great across the board. That's amazing. And so Chris and Tessa, you first took on the Marvel Universe. Now you're in the MIB universe. What is it that you guys have that allows you to tackle multiple universes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how much time do you have? Because we have a lot. Uh, what, what do we what have? Do we have? Yeah. I mean, we, we just had so much fun working on Thor uh, and then, uh, then, then, then Avengers and this opportunity came up and it was, you know, the huge advantage and a, a no-brainer to, to, to jump on board with Tessa just because, you know, we have a pre-established pre uh, friendship, uh, chemistry, understand each other's rhythms. Most of the time, shooting you can spend so much of the shoot trying to find those things, you know, yeah. and then you, you think, oh, God, I wish we could go back and reshoot the start now, now that we do know each other. So you get to hit the ground running and um, you trust one another to, to take risks and improvise and do things, you know, you've got each other's back, and, and so it's, it's just a dream, that scenario, so. Chris, one thing you have is he grew up in, in the bush. Did you grow up in the bush? Kind of, a bush adjacent. <laughs> I did, yeah, and in the bush, yeah. him and his brothers, you may know them, Liam and, and um, Luke Hemsworth, played guns, like you, you like fake guns and swords and stuff. So What's you're really good at that, like I remember in those oh, sequences. Right. You're oh, yeah. like, no, you are. I'm He's naturally right. very gifted at it because you can feel kind of silly doing those things, you know. Because sometimes you have like a fake sword, and you. But he, you're so. Well, you said to me good. that before once about. I did it. That's like, what I did as a kid, like yeah. all day long, and as an adult now as well. <laughs> as a big kid. I don't think you've grown up. As a as taller kid. Yeah. As the tallest kid anyone's ever seen. And so we got a Facebook fan question from Lauren Damon. She asked, would MIB apprehend Thor and Valkyrie since they are from space? Uh, mm. Men in black don't apprehend everyone from space. Just yeah. the bad guys. True. Yeah. That's right. The scum in the universe. Yeah. We, we might try and recruit them, I think. Yeah. Utilize their skills. You, yeah. Your character might try to... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I have to deal with. Hey, hey, on set every day. That's right. Have a crack at it. <laughs> when yeah. Thor? <laughs> yeah. I'm cracking myself? Yeah. yeah. They, they could hold oh, Thor. That's, that's fan fiction they I want to see. Like it. two of yeah. your characters together. Yeah. Pride month. <laughs> so Walter and Lori, Lay from Twitter asks, how does it feel to be revitalizing such an iconic series? So tell me, what was it like revisiting this franchise? That's so beloved. Scary to take it on. Um, and it's actually the first movie we produced together. So, oh, wow. so it's also it was scary, but it's also a movie that's really very special mm -hmm. to us because of that reason. And um, uh, we didn't want to do it until we felt we had a story and characters that warranted it. Um, especially since we were no longer going to be, uh, you know, working with the original cast. So that was key, kind of finding a story that seemed worth telling, and then. And it was really, these two, in fact, we were a little, you know, we loved Thor and loved both of them in it. A little bit, the only to us negative is it doesn't look like we have no imagination. We just cast them again. Um, but they were so, they were, I, I kind of, there, were, there was no one else to play these roles in my mind. There's yeah. so many gifted actors, but you find as a producer, often you, it comes down to, I, they better say yes, or I'm not sure we have a movie. That's so. true. We're lucky, right? Yeah, You've had that broke. experience as well. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't fix it. Yeah. They're great. <laughs> so, Camille. What I, she said, but perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and, Camille, I heard you were a fan of the franchise beforehand. What was the, Were you a fan before? Of Men in Black? Yes. Yeah, of and, course. And so, what was it like joining this group and this <laughs> new, like, take and uh, continuation of the franchise. I mean, I was, you know, when they called me to do it, I was, I was, you know, 
That's not Some, what happened. <laughs> Gary's not, got no, this no. other version of the story. There's just the, 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 the truth. Gary, tell your version that's what? the lie. No, I'm not going to interrupt. I'm going to let you speak. No, no, no. But I want you to tell the truth. Gary said that he asked me to do it, and I said no, which is completely untrue. Well, it's good. We were at the Black Panther premiere, and I'm a huge, huge fan. And I'm a huge fan of Gary's. I was very excited. I don't know if I felt that, but we had the Black Panther premiere, and I love Silicon Valley, and I loved all all of your stuff, the stand up and everything. And I said, you know, I have a, a, a great role. I hadn't, even, I hadn't even signed on to this franchise yet. I read the script and I read the part of Pawnee and I thought he would be perfect. And I saw you just by chance and you said what? This is not true. <laughs> <laughs> you say, his version of the story is he came up to me and said, there's something I want you to be in. And he says, I said, I don't do comedies anymore, <laughs> which is completely untrue. Okay, it's, it's, what okay. happened was, you came up to me, I said, I'm a huge fan, very excited to meet you, and you said, I'm doing something that might be something for you in it, and I was like, I will do whatever you have, I would love to work with you. And then I read a couple weeks later that you were doing Men in Black, and I got excited, I was like, I hope he was talking about Men in Black. So that's yeah. the real version of the story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's right. You can answer his question. I just wanted to kind of yeah. put you no, on I was, like neither of those stories. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very excited to meet him, and he said, there's something, and I was like, of course, anything. Yeah, you know. something like that. No, no, it was great. It's just being an alien assassin was different, right? It was a, the what? To be an alien assassin with Pawnee was different for you. I'd never done anything like this before. You yeah. know, I was excited to do Men in Black. I was excited to work with these guys. I was excited to work with him, with them. And I just had never done a CG character like that. So I was excited to work with these people, but also for the actual work of it, because I, I, it's a kind of performance that um, I'd never done before. Wow. And you killed it. Yeah, so <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, you did. And so, Gary, uh, tell us about Chris and Tessa's dynamic on-screen chemistry. So uh, we have a Twitter question from Sarah. She wanted to know, what were your favorite aspects about the characters, and how'd you bring those to life? Well, I mean, the characters, they operate from different places. They, they're both agents, but, you know, one kind of operates and works by the book, and the other one is kind of fly, mm. flies wild and loose with the rules. And it's Rushes really fun. <laughs> it's really fun to watch them um, operate. And so for me, I've made a few ensemble uh, films or films with ensemble cast, uh, like Fate of the Furious or Italian Job and things like that. And as a director, you have to work really hard to get that chemistry, you know, and they have it naturally. And so it's not only fun, fun to direct, it's fun, also fun to watch for me. And just, that's one of the best dynamics is to direct. It's a lot easier for me. It's a lot more entertaining, and it's just a lot more fun. Wow. And so, Chris, what was the most intriguing thing about the MIB universe that drew you into this? Um, I, just, I just love the original films. I thought they were incredibly unique. I have such vivid memories of, you know, the, the, the opening few shots of that film and Will Smith running through the street, tracking down the alien, and then re or the guy realizing mm -hmm. he's an alien. And just the sort of charisma, the charm. Even the way it was shot, technically, you know, you often feel like the, you're looking right down the lens, or you as an audience, they're looking right at you, and so it's very immersive in that sense. Um, it, 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 you say a unique blend of sort of cop film mixed with sci-fi, um, but the opportunity to sort of take advantage of what wonderfully was done before and not remake it, but continue it on, you know, mm -hmm. and expand it onto a sort of a global setting like we've done, and which is why we shot in in London and Paris and Morocco and Italy and New York and so um, it felt you know kind of like a working holiday in that sense that we just got to travel around the world um, but and, and then the people you know the script was fantastic and and it was something different to what I'd done before too so. right and so Walter you know this franchise as Chris was speaking to it's so beloved you know what is it about this franchise why do people love it so much you know I think Something that's different about Men in Black is that it takes place in the real world. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have this opportunity to show the audience something that if they look more closely, they would see it themselves. And I, I think that, that that's what really sets us apart. You know, I remember as a kid, I used to walk out of a James Bond movie, sort of like you did as a kid, pretending I had a gun. <laughs> Well, in the same way, I remember we used to talk about we'd love it for people to walk out of Men in Black and when they saw the steam coming up from the sidewalk in New York, say, is that really the subway or is that something we're not aware of? I, I think that's an, an ever-present value in it. And, and the other thing is, because it's about human characters, it gives you the opportunity to cast great actors and let them show their stuff. They're sort of the, you know, the, the counterpoint to this fabulous world that's all around them. And, those two things were true back then, and I hope they're true now. 
So Tessa, first off, congratulations on your time next gen cover. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. Wow. So obviously, you have a meaningful voice with this generation. And um, did your activist perspective shape the way you played Agent M? And you know, describe your character's journey and how she got to be this lead woman in black. Oh, that's such a good question. I, I mean, I don't know. For for me, my activism is seamless with my work. I it it it's hard to disconnect those elements. I feel like the things that we do, we have the opportunity not just to reflect the world in which we live, but to create it. Um, something that I've always loved about these movies is that they celebrate our differences, that they, they show us that it's possible for us to coexist even if we come from different places. I love that about the Men in Black franchise. Um, obviously, because it's called Men in Black and I am not a man, um, there's always been women in these narratives. Um, I'm so happy that Emma Thompson came back and I'm such a huge fan of her and talking about activism, she, she has it in spades. But um, you know, it's the first time we've seen a woman at the forefront of one of these stories and I think inside of it, something I've also loved about the films forever is they're sort of subversive. They talk about issues of race and integration inside of this zany world. I thought inside of our film there's an opportunity to talk about what it is like to be a woman inside of male dominated spaces. And I think that we got to do that a little bit, that we get to talk about sort of privilege. Um, sometimes we're unaware that we have it. Um, <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm just talking about my character. That's the character of I think that that was something that we that was something that we talked about in infusing inside of it. I love that these films. One of my favorite moments in any of the Men in Black films is when this guy gets sucked into the car and. And Tommy says to Will, does every model come with one of those, meaning the driver? And Will says, yes, he used to be black, but he kept getting pulled over. And I love that. It, there's a chance to really talk about real world things inside of a world that is a skosh uh, more inventive than ours is. And I think that we were able to do that a little bit inside of this. So for me, it's like I'm, I'm always looking at every opportunity. I don't think that the things that we make should feel like medicine. They should go down easy. But if you have the chance to say something about the world in which we live, why not? So oh. I, ho I hope that we did that in, in whatever way made sense inside of this narrative. Great. And so um, speaking of Emma Thompson, Gary, you know, there's so many talented um, actors and such a fun ensemble. Uh, we have a fan question from at Trone Mama on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, how was yeah, working Trone with Mama. the two most talentedly twins, Laurent and Larry? Oh, well. Oh, I thought you were talking about Thompson and Thompson. That was my direct question. <laughs> you can answer that. No, 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 go ahead. <laughs> no, they're, they're like working with little brothers. I, I love them. I met them back in 2012. And um, I actually kind of tracked them down because I saw their, uh, they had a just amazing dance performance on YouTube. And um, I said, I want to meet these guys. And I met them and I said, you are not only incredible dancers, I think you should be on the big screen. And someday we're going to work with each other. And um, <clears throat> Men in Black came along and I talked to the producers in the studio and I said, you know what? I actually think that we should massage the script a little bit and track these guys down and see if they would be you know, open to playing these parts. And um, I flew to France and uh, met with them and said, hey, listen, you know, remember when we talked you know, six, seven, eight years ago about the uh, working with each other on movies? I said, well, I have an opportunity. Are you open to it? They're like, hell yeah, we're open to it. And um, the rest is history. They're great, they're extremely talented, and I think they have an amazing, amazing future. Amazing, cool. Well, um, I'm gonna go down the line and you guys have to come up with one adjective to describe Men in Black International. Mm. So I'm gonna start with Gary. So get ready, going down the line. I learned this term here in London. <laughs> Chucklesome. 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 Uh, what does it mean? Maybe it should stay in London. Like, funny. <laughs> Chucklesome. Chucklesome, that's so cute. It's funny to me. I'll figure out what it means later. Go ahead. Um, I don't know. Delightful? <laughs> Delightful. Yeah. Epic. Ooh. Mm. I learned this uh, word here yesterday. <laughs> it was some show uh, in uh, Soho. One of the, and they had these adjectives about how great it was. Stonking. Stonking? 
What does it mean? By the way, I, it was that positive. That be good. <laughs> no. <laughs> it said four it stars. Good. It said stonking four stars. So. Why does it sound four What could that be a combination of two stinking? Well, it's like this movie <laughs> is stonking. No. <laughs> All right. You know, like, <laughs> how is it? Stonk of a Oh, yeah, you're going to stonk it up when you see this movie. No. Oh, you stonk it up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 She, she says no. <laughs> stonking? You guys just made up a couple one of words. One word. Wow. Mm. I've never said one word in my life. Yeah. <laughs> no. Are you capable? <laughs> He's not capable of saying such. <laughs> Sounds kind of vague, but I feel and I felt, hopefully we got the script, and certainly when we gathered this amazing group of people to make the movie, that I, th I think the movie's fresh, that there's something about Ooh. it that feels okay. fresh and breezy and original but you know relatable hopefully that's like 10 words i know Sorry. i love <laughs> i did go on no, and you on do, you, you, the fresh is good I just fresh was... i'm going to share the secret to our long relationship fresh yeah. <laughs> see i could use fun i was use fun but that's the one i was going to use it all right, stonking. perfect. Stonking. Well, we are out of time, but oh. I did want to say congratulations, Gary, Thank on you. your um, the uh, excuse me the receiving a star on the Walk of Fame. Oh, thank you. So I, I just want to know what did that mean to you? Wow, um, just it was a flat out honor, uh, and again to be you know set alongside some amazing artists, you know some of the greatest artists in history. Um, Steven Spielberg is you know a part of this project, a part of this franchise, and to even be you know mentioned in the world with 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 artists like that is amazing so it was a great honor that's so great well thank you so much for tuning in guys and submitting your fan questions and uh, go see men in black international yes when does the movie when 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 do people June 14th June 14th June 14th that's when it comes out yeah go see it it's it's a a <laughs> I've, got, I've got my line <laughs> <laughs> big surprise <laughs>